Yeah, okay. Or we might have been too soon, I don't know. Here we go. Hey, everybody, it's Mark here at Whole Latte Love. Today, uh, our third in a series of five flow profiles at a little, we're just quite sure we're going to get live there, but we're good. Um, uh, we are all alone here. I do have my wife here. Hello, everyone. Quick shout out to my three beautiful daughters, my mom and dad, Ted and Karen. Um, so what we're going to do today... Oh, and our grandson, Levi, he's a year and a half, and he's a whole lot of fun. I haven't gotten to see a lot of him, but wow, what a fun age. So today it's a flow profile for working with, you know, Italian style, classic uh, bean blends, I'll get it out, uh, darker roast, you know, and coffees that really don't depend a lot on freshness. So what I'm going to do is use a flow, well, I'll, I'll pull a normal shot, so without using flow profiling, then see if we can't make it a little bit better by using a profile. Um, again, we are doing the live streams Tuesdays and Thursdays. Next Tuesday is going to be, we'll do a lever style shot using Flow Profile. I've had excellent results uh, with classic kind of bean blend coffees with that. Um, and then next Thursday, how you can make filter coffee with an espresso machine. You know, you're using a much coarser grind and a very low flow rate to make a filter coffee. So that's really cool. Um, you can check, I got a lot of links down in the description for, for some other, uh, pertinent videos uh, on flow profiling and some of the stuff we're using today. But let's start, before we start pulling shots, I just want to go through what we are using today. So I have a Profitech Pro 500 over here. This is a heat exchange machine with PID. It's a vibration pump, reservoir fed only. And you can see up here, here is the flow control right here. So this just con controls the flow rate to the uh, E61 group. Uh, when you have a flow control, it also comes with the group mounted uh, brew pressure gauge, which can really help you. And I'm going to use that today. A lot of times I'll do a profile using timing or some visual cues uh, during an extraction. For this, I'm going to kind of use visual cues from, from the extraction and uh, from the pressure gauge here, but will let me know what my flow is doing. So this is a PID machine, so really, really good temperature accuracy. Now, if you're familiar with machines, and PIDs, a lot of times you'll see a display right here. What Profitech has done with this machine, they put the PID behind the drip tray here, so you would set it here, and you're saying, Mark, you don't want to brew at 255 degrees, right? And yeah, you're right. What that temperature is, is the actual temperature in the boiler, okay? And you set it there, so you always have steam. So you always have steam. Um, and what you do is you use a manual, and you'll, there'll be a chart in the manual that'll tell you uh, what temperature to set here to get a specific brew temperature at the group head. So I'm running, uh, you'll see it bounce between 254, 255. That'll move give me... The move the filter. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Thanks, honey. Um, so you'll see this run between 254, 255. I'm set at 254. That's going to get me 199 degrees at the group. What happens in a heat exchange machine, and I've shown this in other videos, a cutaway of a heat exchange boiler. There's a separate section in the boiler that's isolated from the steam producing section that picks up heat. Then uh, companies like Proftech, ECM, Rocket, they do a really good job of engineering uh, the thermosiphon. So what happens from inside that boiler is water is constantly circulating out to this group and heating this massive group out up, which is part of the thermal system of the machine. So even when it's not operating, through convection, there's always water circulating out to this group, giving up some of its heat, heating up the group. Um, and, but if you set that temperature, you'll get very accurate. In fact, this morning what I did is I took my uh, SCASE device. I'm just going to put this back real. I just want to make sure I was really getting 199. So I had my SCASE device. That's this guy right here. Um, it's got a little temperature sensor built in. Uh, if you're not familiar with this case, it also has, this is kind of like a dummy coffee puck, um, but a highly sensitive microphone. So if you're ever measuring brew temperatures, you can't just stick an average thermometer in the water coming out to get a brew temperature. In fact, the Specialty Coffee Association manual on using a SCASE device to get accurate brew temperatures is 10 pages long, and it's a really involved process. But I checked mine, I'm getting 199. So that's the Pro 500. Um, a couple other things about this machine. It's one of my favorite heat exchange machines. Profitech, Profitech makes excellent machines, huge valves. I'll just show you here. These are sprung, um, so you don't really have to turn hard at all to get steam out of these, right? And they shut off very easily. It's a nice two-hole tip, no burn wands. 
um, a very well put together machine. So that's the machine we're using. Alongside of that, um, I've got what I consider a high-end appliance grinder. This is the Barazza Sete 270WI. It is a weight-based grinder. Now, I've seen the 270, uh, back when it was just the 270W, now it's the WI. I'll tell you a little bit about why that is. This came out like three, four years ago, and I remember talking to Kyle Anderson at the uh, Specialty Coffee Expo um, about the grinder. They made a lot of improvements. When it first came out, it did a nice job, but they have made it so much better, and that's what the eye is all about, because this is intelligent. The, this grinder grinds very fast. It produces an incredibly fluffy grind. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, and it, it's incredibly accurate. The eye is, means intelligent because when it's grinding, it actually shuts off the grinding before all the coffee has fallen into the portafilter. Now, my standard usually when I'm uh, using weight, dose, weight-based dosing for espresso is about 0.3 grams. I want to be within that when I'm doing that. This grinder, usually within 0.1 or 0.2 grams. Um, it, with no user intervention, and as it does that, it kind of learns, like if it got a little over one time, it knows next time when it grinds that weight, it has to shut off a little sooner. So that's really cool. Let's talk about the coffee I'm using. One of my favorites, if you're familiar with my videos, this is Maroma's Orphea. Um, it's roasted, I, I believe, outside Salerno um, in Italy. I've been drinking this four or five years. Um, this is an Italian style bean blend, a classic sort of blend that I really like. It might be just a little bit on the lighter side of, you know, the typical uh, Italian style coffee like that, but it is a blend. It produces, I'm going to show you, it produces buckets of crema. Uh, so if you like the crema, now I've had coffees that produce lots of crema and taste horrible. This one produces lots of crema and tastes fantastic. In fact, it gets four and a half out of five star reviews on our website, more than 250 reviews there. Um, people just love it. They they, they go to this and they don't turn back. And it's, and it's not expensive. This is not a specialty coffee. It's one that doesn't have to be incredibly fresh. Um, in fact, what I'm using today was roasted six months ago. I've had it in, the, and you know, when you get a coffee like this, you just want to keep it in the bag. Um, it's already done all its off-gassing a long, long time ago, but they are incredibly stable and they're really good. I've had it, you know, in a, a coffee that was roasted a year ago and it's still fantastic. And, Folks just love it. Um, I also use this for longer coffees at home. We have a bean to cup uh, automatic machine and my wife Tracy and my, my daughter uh, Sydney really like this coffee a lot. It's pretty much all we ever use at home. It makes a really nice long coffee too. Um, so that's the coffee and you're, you're gonna see just how much crema this coffee can make. Couple of the other tools, I've been talking about this in my live streams uh, for a while now. I always, pretty much always re replace the stock uh, shower screens in these machines. Here's a stock screen. It's an actual, there's an actual screen in this on top. So it's going to catch coffee particles uh, and oils and it's going to get gummed up. Um, also, one thing, you know, if you want to check how your screen is doing, do this. Take your portafilter off, run the machine. What you're looking for is a really nice shower of coffee. A lot of the stock screens like this, they're going to end up giving you a single stream and that's going to wet part of your puck and not other parts for a little while. And that's going to maybe create opportunities uh, for different extraction rates through different parts of the puck. And I want everything even, so I want that nice shower, and that's what a screen like this does. Also, it's like, it's like a non-stick pan, like a high-quality non-stick pan. You know, you can go and clean these just by wiping them like this. Of course, you do want to do your back flushing still. Um, but they stay really clean. I don't know, it's got, what it has is a quartz coating on it. They call it nanotech. It's not nanoparticle, so don't worry about that. It's uh, nanotechnology that they use to put the quartz coating on here and make it like a really nice nonstick pan. Now, just like a nonstick pan, you don't want to go scrubbing these with, you know, something metallic. Um, but they hold up really nice. They give excellent distribution of water over your coffee. So I really do like those. Um, also, I also have the the uh, silicone gasket here, the typical stock gaskets are a harder rubber, um, so you have to crank in a little bit. I'm just going to put my portafilter back here to keep it warm. You should always do that. So that's that. Um, I also have, I'll be, instead of tamping, if you, again, if you've been watching my videos, you know for a couple years I've been using a leveler. This is the Jack Leveler. It comes in a bunch of different styles, so you can kind of personalize. Um, what I really like about this, this also tamps the coffee. I'm going to show you that in a second, but it's adjustable depth. You just turn it and it, you can get the depth to get the right compression of your coffee in a filter basket. Now the one I'm using today, I know I just go all the way out. I specifically selected my dose 
and the basket I'm using. Um, I will be using a Barista Pro 20 gram basket with a 19 gram dose. But let me show you how that works. And I just want to show you how it compresses the coffee. I always like a dry basket to start. And here, we're going to get into the grinder here. So it is hands-free. I just got to make sure these guys are set right. Okay. Um, so you can just put your portafilter in and turn it on. The display just turns off after a minute. Um, this has an Akaya scale built into it. I'm going to use another Akaya scale to do brew ratios and weigh my output. Um, so I've got 19 grams in here. So just press play. <laughs> And there you go. That's a lovely clump-free, let's sacrifice a little bit to the coffee gods there. Um, a lovely distribution. It's clump-free, it's fluffy, it's nice. Now, if you heard that, it's a little louder than most grinders. It's got that straight through design, but also that means very low retention. Um, I've measured this, it's usually under half a gram, which is fantastic. So the leveler here, again, I already know, using my leveler, I need to be all the way down with that. So to use this leveler, to set it on the coffee and start spinning clockwise. Now in a couple of recent videos, I have been trying out, I've got back on the back shelf here, you probably can't see it, but the uh, Bravo distributor and tamper system, it's a really high-end tool um, when you want no questions asked, excellent distribution and compression of the coffee, that's the way to go. But this is really, really good too and a lot less money. So I'll just pull that out. I just want you to see, there's no doubt you're going to have a perfectly parallel surface to your coffee puck, and that's important. Is you've, if you're tamping and you know you get left or right or front or back, um, you can end up creating areas where there's going to be a different flow through your puck. And it does compress it as well. Now, some people tamp after this. In fact, the Bravo system is a distributor and doesn't really compress the coffee. Uh, but let me do this. This usually works perfectly. We're on live. I'm just going to try and knock out this puck in one piece. And there you go. Got a little wet. I guess I didn't get all the water out of there, so I got a little left behind. But it will come out in one piece. It does compress the puck just fine. Um, and that's all you need to go. Um, with this, I like a little bit finer grind, and so do the baskets I'm using. They like a finer grind. So that's where I go. It's a little bit finer. Um, so let's do our flow profile shot. First we'll do it actually without the flow profile. We'll set this as it was stock and I want to talk about that just a minute. Let me just get that set right. There we go. Um, let's talk about this. So this is the flow control device here. So you can totally close the flow off and then as you open it up, you're going to get more flow, more flow, more flow. Now I also have a link down in the description about calibrating this. That sounds, that sounds like it's uh, very involved. It's really not. Um, it's just seeing what the flow rates are at certain valve positions. So what I do is open up a quarter turn, then I'll let this run for 20 seconds, and then you, what I like to do is weigh, what, weigh the amount of water that's going in my cup. You can do it by volume because one milliliter equals one gram. So I run it for 20 seconds and then divide that result by 20. Now I follow around and do every half turn. And what I end up with is something like this. I like graphs and stuff. And this is actually for a... Uh, this is for a Pro 700, which has a rotary pump. So I get what my flow rates are at certain turns. Now, I know the stock flow rate of this vibration pump machines, and it's very similar on other vibration pump machines, is going to be about 8 grams a second. A rotary pump machine is usually pretty close to 11 grams per second. So to run a stock shot like I wasn't using the profiling device at all, I know that I get that flow at one and a quarter turns. So I'm all the way closed there, so I just open it up one and a quarter and that's a stock flow rate. So let me grind for this shot. Again, awesome distribution. I didn't see what the weight is, but I'm guessing it was like 19 or 19.1. Excellent distribution. I sometimes give that just so I'm not knocking any coffee out. Also, with, this, with these levelers, they are precision tools. I'm going into a precision basket here, so it's very important that there be no coffee around here. They can bind up if you have a little extra coffee from the last time you used it around here. So make sure those are clean when you're using them and it won't bind. Um, there are knockoff levelers and distributors. They tend to be lighter. They won't have this easy adjustment like this where you can adjust the depth and they won't be as precise in your basket. They won't have a really good fit in the basket. That's why I like this one. So it's e really easy. Just spin till you're good. And there you go. Again, perfectly level every time. Oh, I'm also using um, shot pitchers here. Um, and I'm going to make a bucket of creme in this. You'll see 
Um, so with these, you can get volume measurements. So it's got uh, milliliters and ounces. I use the milliliters. Uh, I know with this coffee, although I'm going to be weighing the shot, and I'm doing a one to two ratio. So 19 grams in my filter basket, 38 grams of coffee out, that this coffee produces so much crema that actually the volume in here with the crema is going to go up to pretty close to, if not right up to, 70 milliliters. And that's why if you're going to do brew ratios, you really have to weigh. So let's get this in. And I'm going to take my Pixis scale. This thing is so cool. Um, I also have the lunar scale. It's really tiny. comes with this really cool case. You can really actually put this in your pocket. They do all kinds of uh, things. They can measure in ounces or grams. They can do auto start. They can auto tear. I'm just going to use it to simply measure my coffee. So I'll just place that on, turn it on. And if I get my cup on there, oh, I'm going to have to tear it. If I had started with a cup on there and turned it on, it would, it would have automatically teared. Or you can set it to automatically tear. Okay, make sure I'm... And we'll go. Now, I'm not timing this shot at all. I dialed in the coffee this morning. It's a very stable coffee. So the timing really shouldn't have changed all that much. So I'm just going to let this go. And so I'm using the normal flow rate. As you can see, uh, my pressure is coming up. Right up to 9 bar. On the group. And I mean... This makes, even it, without the flow control, this coffee, the Maromas Orphea, makes an excellent, excellent espresso. But I can make it just a little better with a flow control. Now I'm at just uh, 30 grams. I'm going to try and stop it at 38. And not bad. I'm at 39. That's close enough for live streams. Uh, but look at that. I mean, look at, when I say a bucket of crema, I'm not kidding. Um, and it really... It really does taste great, even without the flow. But I can make it a little better with the flow control. So I'm just going to stir this. I want to take a taste. Yeah, and that's exactly, I mean, I've had this shot thousands of times. It's very nice. The Orphea has a little bit of chocolate in it. it Honestly, it rarely, rarely gets better. bitter. You really have to do something bad to make it go bitter. It doesn't have those flavors in there. It's really good. It's really nice with uh, really nice flavor with milk as well. Um, and this is an espresso that has has some body to it too. In fact, when I've done a lever profile with this, I get what I call marshmallow crema. So the top of the crema has like you know that little uh, well, like it almost looks like a cloud, and it's got that perfect golden color like a like a well done you know but not burnt marshmallow so that was the normal shot now let's do one with a flow profile so let me get rid of this i'm going to take a look at my puck which looks really good no channeling and i do like it dry so i'm going to grind this shot and again i'm going to pay attention this time and see what my weight output is i've used this grinder so many times um, and it's always incredibly accurate Except for that time. So let's do another one. That, that was strange. That never happens. I swear to God, I've done 15 shots today, and they've all been 19.1, 19, 19.2. There we go, 19.3. I might have knocked it. So this is a very sensitive. I, may, I wonder if I knocked it while I, was, while I was doing that. But anyhow, beautiful distribution. Again, make sure if you're using a leveler like this that it's clean of any coffee around the edges. And just spin. And you know you're going to be perfectly level and well compressed every time. I mean, look at it. It's absolutely gorgeous. So, I'm going to load this up. Let's get our scale back in there. And the Pixis, um, there it is, Terry, um, measured out to one one hundredth of a gram. So for this, I'm going to just close it down and show you what I'm doing here. So I'm going to go to, I'm going to start at the stock flow rate, one and a quarter turns. And then what I'm going to do, now a lot of times I'll use time, and a lot of other machines I have like timers on them that start automatically when you start a shot, or you could use a stopwatch or something. What I'm going to do is use a pressure gauge. So what I'm looking for is to get up to, right just about eight bars and that's when I'll start seeing a drip and that's when I'm gonna go and do a profile that on paper 
looks like this. So I'm going to run until I get that pressure, and then I'm going to, in a linear fashion, go all the way down until I hit my 38 grams uh, on the scale. So that's what we're going to do here. So I'm set at my stock flow rate, and now it's just watch. And I have to lean over here a little bit so I can see what's going on. It's coming up. I should start seeing the float right there, and now is when I start going down. What I'm looking for is to decrease the pressure here, which lets me know my flow is slowing down, and to do that in a linear fashion, so kind of constantly turning it down. As the shot progresses, I'm at 20. I'm just going to let it go. I went a little too quick there. And I'm looking, I can stop the shot with this. I'm at 35, 30, and I'll stop it right there. I ended up just at 39, so just like the last one, again, a really nice bucket of crema. And you know, I, like I said, I think I said before, crema isn't everything, but this is a coffee that really produces crema and really tastes good. I've had other coffees that produce a lot of crema and don't taste good. This one does. Let me taste that. Oh. So what I got out of this is I, got, I have nothing sticking out of this. I have I, I just a hair more brightness. And I think in a normal shot um, of this coffee, it loses its little brightness. I got a little more brightness with this shot. But it's, but it's very balanced. It goes well with it. I would really like this one in milk as well. It actually, it's got a chocolate and just a little bit of fruit with that extra stuff. It's really, it's really balanced and really round. I really like this a lot. There's nothing that's sticking out um, that's bad. So it's a little bit better, I think, than, than this one. Uh, I liked it. I think it's a, a bit of an improvement on that. Um, so that's, that's the flow control. Uh, we do, what's our time here? We're at 21. So I usually try and go about 25 minutes. I do like to take some questions. I'm guessing uh, some folks have been asking questions. Let's see what we've got. Oh, will I pe please speak slowly? I'm sorry, I'm trying to squeeze a lot in there. That's from uh, Nementia, I guess. I'm sorry, I do talk fast, and I have had a couple espressos today, which, which gets me going. I try, my wife's sitting over there laughing. Um, I also like to use my hands and play with my hair, which is getting really long, because I haven't had a haircut in a long time. But you didn't see me in the 80s, did you? <laughs> yeah, so uh, let's see if we got anything else there. Uh, oh, I see, I see a lot of people are, if we're get, getting some questions answered here, uh, 1019, so you're live, but uh, who is the producer, the blend of the coffee? So this is uh, from the coffee, that's from Scott Campanelli. Scott, it's Maromas Orfeo. Uh, we do have this, there's a link down in the description for this coffee. Um, it runs, like I said, I think I said, did I say? About $10 a pound, $20 a kilogram. Like some of the specialty coffees I use, they're running $20, $25, $30 a pound. So, um, and this is a coffee, again, that's going to be, if so long as you just keep it in the bag until you're ready to go use it, this coffee will be stable for a very long time. It doesn't depend on freshness. Like, you know, a, couple, a week or so ago, I was using a, a single origin, uh, high altitude coffee at a lighter roast level. Those coffees you do want to use a little fresher. This one and other similar kind of blend coffees, they are really good in the bag for quite a long time. You really don't have to do anything special to store it. Um, so there's that. Let's see if there's anything else here. Uh, okay. Oh, I guess the, uh, hopefully the captions are helping out. Um, let's see. I'm just looking through for questions. Got some folks in England watching. Hi, Rob Shaw. Uh, got Guido in Australia who loves the videos. Thanks, Guido. Um, Let's see. Okay, so I guess that's it. If there's any other questions, if you want to try and sneak them in real quick, because we do have about a minute left. Um, in the meantime, I'll just hope everybody's doing well and being safe and maybe can get a haircut someday. Uh, <laughs> but uh, if you do, oh, and this coffee, this Orphea coffee, if you're new to espresso, again, it's so, it's easy, easy to work with. If you're using those really expensive single origins, they can be a little trickier, you know, so I suggest starting with something like this. You know, you really have to do something wrong not to get a decent espresso out of this. 
Um, and also mention, you know, this says espresso on it. I use it for long coffees all the time. I, actually, my favorite with this coffee, if I'm doing a long coffee, is to let it cool off a bit. And I just, it's like, I, I can't say chocolate bomb, but the chocolate flavors just really come out when it cools off. And that's just something, you know, about drinking a beverage that, you know, if it's closer to room temperature or your, your body temperature, you're going to detect more flavors in it. So I'm going to wrap it up for now. Next Tuesday, we're going to do a lever profile, which has got me that what I call that uh, marshmallow sort of crema on some coffees that I really, really like. Then next Thursday, we'll show you how to do coffee shots. Really pretty simple. Um, the thing to know, you know what I want you to understand doing these flow profile uh, videos is once you kind of know the basic principles, um, it's not it's not like rocket science like for instance in this coffee we hit it hard at first and then tail it off to avoid pulling out uh, undesirable flavors and make it a little more round for a really fresh coffee we do a really long low pre-infusion and then go up a little bit and then maybe tail off at the end which allows a coffee to off gas so once you know just a few of these basic principles you can really use flow control with a particular coffee that you're using to improve it so uh, until next time, which will be next Tuesday, please everyone be safe. Maybe we'll get a haircut someday and go there. I'm Mark from Whole Latte Love. I do appreciate you joining me. Oh, do use the comments. I do pay attention to those and love to give detailed answers. I've gotten a lot of great feedback there. But until then, uh, we'll see you back here soon for more of the best on everything coffee brought to you by Whole Latte Love. Thanks.